Uh, yeah, so I'm I'm Reed. Uh, I'm here. I work on uh, I work on Clang, and I make I basically work on making Clang work well on Windows. Uh, and I work for Google, uh, and basically this sort of this whole effort is really about uh, getting getting Clang working so we can sort of use it for all of our all of our projects that we ship on Windows as well as other platforms. But uh, you know, everyone else gets to consume it also, so that's that's pretty awesome. Um, and I, I gave this talk. I decided to give this talk because uh, I'm here at this conference, and I keep talking to people and. They all want to know, you know, like what's the, what's what's the deal with uh, Clang on Windows? Like, when am I going to have it? You know, what are the, what's done? Like, what, what's when 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 will it be done? Um, and so I, I felt it was important to come and basically answer this frequently asked question. <laughs> um, so the main thing is that we basically don't have exception handling done yet. That's what I'm working on, uh, along with one of my colleagues, uh, pretty uh, consistently. That's what I've been doing for several months. Uh, and we'll probably continue to do for a while. Um, the, other, the other missing piece for, that I think a lot of people will need before they can actually uh, get into using Clang on Windows for their day-to-day -day, uh, you know, developer experience on Windows is debug information. This is a very important part of the MSVC Visual Studio ecosystem uh, that you know, we have a long way to go with, and I don't know where we're going there uh, yet. Uh, but what, what does work uh, is we spent a lot of time working on MSVC compatibility and getting ASEN working there. Uh, and so I was going to talk about that first. Um, so this is mostly just a laundry list of the stuff that we've already worked out, right? Like we've already spent a very long time uh, making sure that Clang is, you know, 100% compatible with the way that Visual C++ does like record layout, figures out how it's going to lay out its V tables, exactly what order those, you know, funny overloaded virtual methods are going to be in, uh, you know, Turns out it's backwards. That's fine. Whatever. I don't care. Um, <laughs> but it works now. <laughs> um, you know, all all this good stuff. Uh, and if you know, this turned out to be the easy part, which was kind of surprising, right? Like we we got good at this. Um, you know, and so if you if if you encounter more bugs with compatibility, like you can uh, if you can file bugs about it with you know reproducers, uh, we were happy to look at it. Uh, and I'm. You know, pretty confident that we can get through it uh, pretty quickly. Um, the the thing that was not so easy was exception handling. <laughs> so what's up with that? Um, basically, uh, you know, SEH was designed probably 30 years ago or something, um, and it's it, you know it, was, it, was, it seems like it was designed in a vacuum. I don't know. I don't know who the people were. You know, I don't I, I don't ask. I don't need to. Um, <laughs> but. Uh, it's not, you know, it wasn't designed by multiple compiler vendors the same way that the uh, exception handling mechanism that we use on System 5 platforms uh, was. You know, it's, yeah, so it's, it was, you know, much more of a challenge. Um, but, you know, we, we understand everything now. Um, we tried one implementation approach, uh, and we basically got pretty far with it, and we, we thought we were done with it. Uh, and then we realized that there were a lot of problems around uh, rethrowing exceptions in C++. Uh, the tables that we were generating were just, you know, not not right, <laughs> uh, along with the code. Um, but we've, you know, gone back and come up with a new design, and you know, both uh, C++ exceptions and uh, structured exception handling, which is you get to via double underscore try, uh, should be working, you know, sometime in the next few months. I guess December is probably reasonable. Uh, one thing I wanted to point out that's sort of out, of out of scope for the work that you know we're doing towards making exceptions work is uh, we're not really we're we're not tackling the problem of modeling uh, non-call or asynchronous exceptions in LLVM. So uh, you know it, you can catch these kinds of exceptions if you do it through a you know level of function call indirection. Uh, you know just put your function that's doing the funky division into another uh, separate function uh, with, outside of the tri scope. And we can catch it, um, but we weren't, we're not really digging into this uh, representational problem right now. Um, all right, so the other, the other thing that's sort of to do is basically debug info. Um, and it's pretty important to interoperate with the existing tools on the, on the platform. Um, and there's sort of two ways we can go forward from here. Uh, one is to pursue Dwarf, which is the standard format that we use on other platforms, you know, both uh, Mac and Linux. Pretty much, yeah, it's, it's what we coordinate with uh, Apple on, that kind of thing. 
there's a standards committee and all that. Um, and, uh, or we could pursue PDBs in code view. Uh, and this is, this is what tools like uh, events tracing for Windows expect to consume to be able to generate stack traces for your program. Um, and so for now, we're kind of pursuing both in parallel and seeing, seeing what works well. Um, yeah, one of the interesting things here is that uh, as Visual Studio starts to gain support for uh, uh, Android, um, they also need to be able to imbibe Dwarf. So there's some hope that maybe that functionality could be reused to debug Windows applications built by client on Windows. Um, but anyway, this is, this is more of a long-term effort. You know, I can't promise this for something like December. Um, I just expect it to get better over time. So, you know, should, should be getting good over the next year, though. Um, I'm out of, I'm at, it's a five minute talk, so I'm, I'm done. <laughs> I was gonna, I was gonna plug address sanitizer. That's the, that's basically the tool that, you know, we've spent most of our effort uh, making sure that it works well on Windows. So, you know, it's probably gonna have the best out of the box experience uh, of all the things that we do. Uh, we use it with uh, Chrome and we use it with Firefox. Uh, so, we should give it a try. Uh, like I said, exception handling is gonna be done soon and debug info should get better. So, you should go to elevim.org and go download a build. <laughs> <laughs>